नेक्स्ट इज द जियो थर्मल एनर्जी द जियो थर्मल एनर्जी कैन बी ऑल्सो ऑफ द मल्टीपल टाइप ओपन टाइप और वी हैव द्लोज टाइप हियर but here in this case the open type is again divided in two types that you can see here one is the dry steam power plant another one is the flash steam power plant the formula would be also same here you will use the geothermal gradient of that particular soil or the below soil layer to increase the temperature of the liquid you will run the turbine you will get the electricity so you can see that from the production well the hot water is coming going to the turbine running the turbine and electricity is created and here it will again go back to cool down and this cold water is again pushed back into the deep soil surface to again create hot water from there so that is dry steam power plant no steam is generated here but in the case of plus steam power plant which is the second type that you can see the liquid is first converted is to steam and that steam will run the turbine so efficiency would be increased here you can see that from the production well hot water is coming the steam is going to the turbine and from this flash tank and the liquid is again going back and mixing with the cooler water and again going to the injection well this steam is running the turbine again that steam is cooled down here converted into liquid and go back to the injection well that is the second type plus steam power plant both are the open type of cycle having then we have the binary cycle power plants here the closed circuit is again used here again you will use introduce a popular type of material or liquid that will go it will take the temperature from the particular water which is coming from the production well this is the place of the temperature exchange now this cooler liquid would be hot now this will go to the turbine run the turbine again this would be cooled down here again this cooler liquid will come to take the temperature and because temperature is exchanged here so the cooler liquid will again go back to this particular injection wall so that is how the binary cycle or the closed cycle works now the temperature increases with the depth that you all know that is 1 degree celsius for 30 to 40 kilo uh, 30 to 40 meter or if you convert it into the kilometer uh, this would be around 25 to 30 degree celsius of the temperature increase then in the binary cycle liquid dominated or rankine cycle is the other name of the binary cycle these are type of the closed cycle of the geothermal energy production and in this liquid dominated or the rankine cycle the liquid that you can use is or isobutane or you can use the freon 12 so isobutane and freon 12 name you have to remember this is not furon don't confuse it with the furon furon is a other material you have to use here freon 12 furon is the part of dirty dozens dirty dozens identified by the Uh, by the international forum who have banned the use of the 12 materials out of these 12 materials one is furon so this is not that furon this is freon 12 so freon 12 is used in the isobutane or the isobutane or in this rankine cycle or the liquid dominated binary cycle geothermal power plants so i hope this is clear and whenever they will ask you the question like what is the liquid used in the rankine cycle of the geothermal energy production so in the option they will provide you furon and freon both so carefully tick mark the freon it is not furon again i am repeating so i hope this is clear to you and in this uh, geothermal energy the formula would be also same 1 minus t cold divided by the p hot to calculate the efficiency of the geothermal energy power plant so that is clear to you right now i hope and i am coming to the new energy that i have to start that is the last energy of this particular unit which is nuclear energy so when radioactive material decay its nucleus emits the alpha particle beta particle or gamma particle and it will differentiate into different isotopes so isotopes what is the isotopes isotopes are the kind of materials two different kind of materials both are having or sharing the same atomic number but atomic mass of the both atoms is different and that is why different that is different because of the different neutrons different amount of neutrons present on that particular atom so that is the isotope so first term that you have to clear here is the isotopes isotopes are the materials or the atoms which are having the same atomic number but different atomic mass and the different neutron number 
for example carbon 12 and carbon 14 both are isotopes of each other in carbon 12 and carbon 14 both share the same atomic number that is 6 then atomic mass is different here one atomic mass is 12 another atomic mass is 14 neutrons number is different in them because in this carbon we have the six neutrons and six protons but in this carbon we have the six protons and the six not six here two more eight neutrons are present here because atomic mass of anything is consisted of the number of protons plus number of the neutrons so because of the more number of neutrons the mass of the carbon 14 is more as compared to the carbon 12 and here carbon 14 is a kind of radioactive material so this is what isotopes are similarly we have the isobars in the isobars the atomic number would be different but atomic mass would be same and the neutron number would be also different so for example again if i take carbon 14 and we have the nitrogen 14 as well so here you can see both mass are equal but in this case atomic number of the carbon is 6 atomic number of the nitrogen is 7 so atomic number is different and the neutron number is also different here in this case we have the seven neutrons in the nitrogen and we have eight neutrons in the carbon so both are isobars of each other sharing the same atomic mass then we have the uh, the isotones in isotones the atomic number would be same the atomic mass Uh, isotones atomic number as well as atomic mass both would be different but atomic numbers number of the neutrons here would be same for the both so that is what isotones are i currently don't remember the example of the isotones so but understand what is the isotones isotones are the materials which have the same kind of neutron number but different atomic number and different atomic mass so this is what isotones are then we have the isomers in isomers everything would be same same atomic number same atomic mass same neutron number but what would be the different any other quantity can be different for example the dipole moment can be different the light reflectance uh side would be different one is reflecting right into left side another is reflecting right into the right side or left side the opposite of that whatever is scenario there so these are the isomers having same atomic number same atomic mass same neutron number so i hope the four terms are clear to you all the terms are important and these are basics of the nuclear energy then coming to the si unit of the radioactivity so the si unit which we use in the radioactivity is the becquerel one becquerel is, is equals to 1 dk per second so one atom if decays per seconds we will say that the radioactivity amount is 1 becquerel then we know that the madam curie is a pro, uh, pronoun the very good scientist who was working in the field of nuclear energy and for the respect of the madam curie we have created another type of unit that is curie So 1 curie is equals to 3.7 multiplied by 10 to the power 10 becquerel or 10 to the power 10 dk per second you can say so both are same becquerel and dk per second so 1 curie is very larger unit of radioactivity that you can see so this is not si unit but this unit is also important and you should remember the value of 1 curie that is equals to 3.7 multiplied by 10 to the power 10 becquerel so this is the basics of the nuclear energy moving ahead in the nuclear energy these are the particles we have seen that the radioactive materials continuously emit the particles particles like alpha beta gamma and these particles have different kind of properties so very first type of particle that we have to remember that is the alpha the alpha particle is equals to the 2 helium 4 it means two atomic number and four atomic mass so a helium nucleus containing the two protons and two neutrons is equals to the alpha particle i am not saying both are same okay understand it this is we are comparing it means that the alpha's atomic mass and the atomic number would be equals to somewhat helium helium which is having the two atomic number and four atomic mass so mass in the amu atomic mass unit terms alpha's mass is 4 and charge is plus 2 and ionizing power if you look at the alpha alpha is having very high ionizing power but very low penetration so 
so if it is having low penetration so it is less harmful as compared to the other different types of radiation because of the low penetrating power this is the alpha then beta beta is equals to electron so it is having very high kinetic energy mass is almost negligible 1 divided by 1950 because the mass of the electron is also negligible the charge that is containing by the beta that is minus 1 it is having moderate ionizing power as well as moderate penetration power with a smaller mass and charge than the alpha particle so penetration power is more than the alpha particle ionizing power is less than the alpha particle then we have the gamma and x rays these are having no atomic mass at all as well as no charge at all zero atomic mass zero charge so having the very high frequency electromagnetic radiation so the ionizing power would be low here because of the non presence of any charge here you can say but the penetrating power would be very high because it is not having any kind of mass at all so it will interact dominantly with the electron cell of all the atoms so because it can easily penetrate not having any kind of charge that's why so the very harmful type of rays are these gamma rays which can damage with a good amount to all the living organisms so i hope the properties of all three particles are clear to you alpha beta and gamma particles here the ionizing potential is inversely proportional to the penetration power you can see here by this particular ionizing power chart so this is what ionizing potential is ionizing potential means how much potential that particle is having to ionize the materials to positive and negative side so if it is high the penetration power would be less if penetration power is high so ionizing potential would be less the gamma radiation is also used for the cancer treatment you have heard about the radiotherapy so in the radiotherapy the gamma radiation is used and in the gamma radiation for the creation of the gamma particles cobalt 60 material is used so cobalt 60 is a radioactive material which is continuously emitting the gamma radiation or the gamma particles that is used in the radiotherapy so that is also asked sometimes in the examination so remember that thing then next thing we have to discuss in the nuclear energy is the sodi fajans law so sodi and fajans both were scientists the different scientists these are not one scientist okay sodi is working separately fajan was also working separately and both concluded some laws that's why the final laws are created by the sodi and fajan both which is known as the sodi fajans law so known as the fajans and sodi's law sometimes also so in radio chemistry in the nuclear physics is a rule governing the transmutation of the elements during radioactive decay it is named after the frederick sodi and casimir fajans who independently arrived at it at about the same time in the year 1913 so what is the rule of the sodi fajans sodi fajans told that the first rule of them is alpha emission so if any particle or if any suppose material that is having the z atomic number a atomic mass so if z x a is emitting any alpha particle which is equals to the 2 helium 4 particle so here the change in the atomic number would be minus 2 and change in the atomic mass would be equal to minus 4 so suppose if that material is having z atomic number previously a atomic mass previously so after emission of the alpha particle the new atomic number would be z minus 2 and a new atomic mass would be a minus 4 so that is the first rule of the sodi fajans law which is alpha emission law so it means if any atom is emitting the alpha particle the atomic number is reduced by 2 and atomic weight is reduced by 4 the next law says that when any atom is emitting the beta particle so the atomic number would be increased by 1 while the atomic mass remains unchanged a is not changing because beta particle is not having any mass and here one beta particle would be released by this particular reaction this is the beta emission so de fajans law the third is the law for the gamma emission and according to the gamma emission if any atomic uh, particle is emitting a gamma radiation or the gamma particle so there would be no change in the atomic number as well as no change in the atomic number because the gamma particle don't have the atomic number as well as don't have any atomic mass so that's why there would be no change 
So all these three laws are combined called as the Sodi Fajan's law. So I hope this is clear to you all.